Hello, and welcome back to another episode of Orthodoxy 101. I'm here again with Father Jonathan. Father, thank you for being with us. Michael, good. All right, uh, what we're going to do, we're going to take uh, three episodes, and we are going to do a three-part series on uh, marriage and sexuality. In our first video, we are going to discuss uh, the foundation of sexuality and marriage. Uh, in next week's video, we're going to discuss the purpose of marriage and issues surrounding marriage. And then in our third video, which will show uh, in three weeks, we're going to touch on issues pertaining to homosexuality um, and the big question, is it right or wrong? Uh, so today we're going to start off with uh, sexuality and marriage. Mm -hmm. And Father, our first question for today is, uh, we believe God created all things, the sun, the earth, uh, the moon, the stars, uh, animals, and humans. Uh, why did God create mankind, both male and female, and what is the purpose of that? Fundamental question. Right. Mankind was the last of God's creation. He is the crown of creation. Uh, so, according to the scripture, man is created in the image of God and according to the likeness of God. And it also says in Genesis 1, God made man in the image of God, he made him male and female, he made them. Then God blessed them and God said to them, be fruitful and multiply, fill the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the heaven, over every living thing that moves on the earth. We believe that human beings created in the image of God are icons of God so that the creation of mankind as male and female has something to point us to the truth of God himself. That there are distinctions among human beings and, and even animals. There are distinctions because there are distinctions in God himself. That there is one God, but he is three persons, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Co-equal, co-reigning in glory, but there are distinctions of persons. And so human beings are created in this way. There is not just one kind of human being, so to speak, but there are two. The one comes from the other. Adam was created first, and then it says that God took a rib out of Adam and built another human being, not another male, not another Adam, but someone like him, mm -hmm. uh, Eve, the first woman. So they are two uh, very similar, of the same essence, if you will, but they are distinguished. There is a male and a female. So humankind and sexuality has something to say about God. And this is ultimately why God has created human beings this way. All right, thank you. Uh, the second question for today. Uh, what is the orthodox point of view in regard to sexuality? Is it the focal point uh, or is there a bigger picture? Much bigger picture. Uh, many people think uh, that sexuality and reproduction is the number one drive in a human being's life to perpetuate the species, you know, if you follow evolutionary thinking. Essentially, if you lead it back to God, though, the fact that there are two different people, a male and a female, a man and a woman, uh, God has created us to live in communion with one another, uh, to participate in life together. And so this ultimately is the purpose of our life as human beings, and especially sexuality. Uh, in sexuality, one is the receiver and one is the, the giver. Mm -hmm. um, so it is a symbiotic relationship. And as a matter of fact, when Adam uh, saw Eve for the first time, he said, at last, someone who is bone of my bones, flesh of my flesh. And God uh, made Eve to be comparable to him to be someone who is um, complementary, so that both of their lives uh, as a whole are greater than the sum of the parts. Mm -hmm. And this is certainly true with sexuality. Uh, even if the man and the woman were not able to have children, and there's that case you know, in marriage today, uh, that doesn't mean that their relationship is any lesser than it should be. Uh, but there is still this intimacy that they share together. And their life together as a communion is something that is greater uh, as a result of that. And ultimately, this sexual intimacy, this closeness, and the bond of love that is formed, mm -hmm. uh, the desire for one another, is iconic of the desire uh, that we have with God. 
and the kind of communion and closeness and participation that we have in the divine life. And so human relationships are created to embody this and to manifest it. All right. Thank you. Um, so you mentioned that uh, the, the physical sexual part of, of humanity or the human uh, condition, I guess, uh, sexuality is not the focal point. Uh, I guess that could tie into virginity. Uh, the Orthodox Church preaches the preservation of virginity until marriage. Uh, Two-parter, why is preserving virginity until marriage important? And also, why is the marriage held in such high regard? Right. Virginity is actually exalted. The state of virginity is higher than that of married life. Uh, St. Paul talks about this very specifically in 1 Corinthians chapter 7. It's a marvelous passage on uh, married life, sexuality, and also virginity. A virgin is somebody who is uh, completely devoted to God and their desire for God, which uh, supersedes desire for anything else, especially a sexual desire for another human being. And that doesn't mean that sexual desire is sinful. Uh, obviously not, because it's something given to us by God. But if you look at the creation of Adam and Eve itself, neither one of Adam or Eve were produced in a sexual way. Uh, they were created by God, Adam, from the dust of the earth, and then Eve from the rib of Adam. So as the fathers of the church say, virginity was the rule in paradise. And so virginity uh, certainly was embodied by our Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, he did not take a mate, a woman, to be married to in a human or a fleshly sense. Mm -hmm. uh, but in fact, uh, his bride is the church itself. Marriage is held in such a high regard uh, because it is something created by God. It is something uh, commanded by God for those who do not have the gift of celibacy or virginity. And certainly the vast majority of human beings in our world today are not called to a virginal state or a celibate state. Um, but we do have these blameless or natural desires, you know, for the other person, specifically a man for a woman and a woman for a man. And so marriage as something that is created by God and, and even commanded by God, uh, by definition, is a good thing. As God told Adam and Eve, be fruitful and multiply, fill the earth and subdue it. Um, so that Adam and Eve were married. And marriage is uh, much more than just a contract, as we commonly think of it today in our Western society. Mm -hmm. uh, marriage, as a matter of fact, is a mystery of the church. It is a sacrament because it is a manifestation, a showing forth or a revealing of something even greater than just human companionship. But uh, it is a manifestation of the kingdom of God, of the kind of devotion and love that God has for us and we have for God. This is especially manifested in the relationship of marriage and in the creation of children within marriage uh, because the ultimate purpose of that is salvation, communion with God, and acknowledgement and praise of God, uh, both now and forevermore. Father, thank you for your time this week. Uh, thank you again for uh, viewing this segment of Orthodoxy 101. Uh, make sure you check in next week for our uh, part two of this series, which will again touch on uh, specifically marriage and the issues surrounding marriage. So once again, thank you. Thank you, Father Jonathan, you, and we will see you next week.